along with it. I said, yeah. And what about her husband, the high school principal? What the hell are you thinking? Then a stunning new twist. Hollywood does not make up scripts like this. Now she's determined to write the ending of her own script. Can you ever live down your biggest mistake? I wish we all had a rewind button. Risky relations. Welcome to 2020 on ID. I'm John Quinones. It was a sex scandal unlike any before it in the small Washington state town of Prosser. A middle-aged mother, she was a prominent figure in her town. Then a fall from grace, a fall that would throw the rumor mill into overdrive and change lives. As David Muir reported in 2013, Linda Lust suddenly found herself an outcast in the very town where she once played such an important role. Go, go! Like most players' moms, Linda Lusk is on the way to watch her son's football game. But unlike other parents, Linda will not get out of her car. This is the closest she'll get to those cheers. Forced to watch from a distance beyond the fence. We're at my son Riley's home football game, and I asked for permission to attend, and I got a one word response from the superintendent that just had denied. In fact, if she steps one foot on the school property, Linda could be arrested. Did you ever think your life would take this turn? No, it's it's been unbelievable. It's been a nightmare. It really, it's just ruined my life, really. Linda Lusk is the one-time former mayor of this small, picturesque community of 5,400 in Washington State's wine country. She is a well-known face for reasons no one saw coming. Do you see them looking at you at the grocery store and the gas station? Oh, absolutely. Go out sense to sense. eat and you see people, you know, doing the whisper and... What do you, what do you think they're whispering? Oh, that's, that's, that lady, that town. I felt like it was suffocating me, choking the life out of me. It was just toxic. Linda Lusk's troubles began three years ago. Hollywood does not make up scripts like this. We have a look at the stories and scores. Kevin Uretsky is a longtime local newsman here, but rarely do headlines like this come from Prosser, Washington. And this one was a stunner. It was one of those stories you can't believe is actually happening, but is. And you really have, you have to tell the story, but you have empathy for all sides. At the center of the story, high school sweethearts, Kevin and Linda Lusk, who are finally together. We were friends for the longest time. It was just really, really nice. They drifted apart. They both went on to marry other people, divorced, and then reconnected, finally marrying each other after 15 years apart. It's, it's or official. It was like no time had passed. Everything just sort of picked right back up again where it was. There was that spark there. It's the Brady Bunch in real life. Kevin had two boys, and I had two boys. And then we've had two more children together. So. Can you guys sit down and try not to be too wild, okay? His, mine, and ours. Their daughter together, Carly, was the only girl along with those five boys. One of those boys, a special needs child, Taylor. Hi, Tay Man. You could just never be mad at him. He's just the best. Linda's life devoted to her son Taylor, born with a rare disorder called trisomy 13. I did not know prenatally that there were any problems with Taylor. Uh, when he was born, there were some physical defects, and I guess I was just thinking, well, oh God, that can be fixed, that can be fixed, and, until a doctor came in and said, well, we suspect a genetic problem. Doctors expecting the worst. He wouldn't probably live a week. <laughs> but under Linda's unwavering care, Taylor would defy the odds. Atta boy, Tay man. <laughs> Making it to 16, he was loved by the teenagers in town, the teens who spent so much time at Linda's house. Among them, Bubba Frank. If he wanted to play, we'd play with him with his toys and stuff. He was so energetic at all times, and just they loved him to death and stuff. So it was great. <laughs> At the time, Bubba is 14, a star football player. Not only a fan of Taylor, he's also right. fallen for Linda's daughter, too. Carly is his first love. Uh, we had a really good relationship and stuff. I liked him, and we were really boyfriend-girlfriend. But, I mean, it was just like, oh, you know, just like little 
kid crush. Yeah, a little puppy love. It's not, not unusual for our kids to invite their friends over and for a lot of people to be there. We're barbecuing <laughs> and, and having people over all yeah. the time. That's what we do. Yeah. The Lusk home is a popular hangout for teenagers. It's only a block from the high school. A family other parents felt good about. A safe place where parents, you know, didn't mind their children going to. You know, they were people in the community that were trustworthy. Linda Lusk's husband, Kevin, is the longtime high school principal in town. She's a local businesswoman, owning and operating her own handbag boutique called Get a Grip. And in 2003, she made a surprise run for mayor and won by just 20 votes. Linda broke a lot of ground. She was the first female mayor. She pushed the envelope in doing things to spread the town's name. Linda was also a very strong personality as the mayor, and I don't think a lot of people were used to that. That did not go over very well with some of the council members. One of them said, no damn woman should have that much power. And there was an editor at the local paper then that um, didn't like me very much. After one turbulent term, she was voted out. But three years later, Linda Lusk would be thrust back into the spotlight in a way no one would ever have imagined. The loving mother, devoted wife, the one-time mayor, now accused of this. Linda Lusk is accused of sending sexually explicit text messages and having sexual contact with a 14-year-old boy. A lot of people were thinking, wait, the former mayor? The principal's wife? Really? Come on. Really? Really? The former mayor is under a... When we come back, what was she thinking? And so I put my hands on her shoulders. I said, what's going on? And then I gave him a hug. When he returned. Linda Lusk, the former mayor of the small town of Prosser, Washington, says she was just nurturing 14-year-old Bubba Frank. But Bubba Frank remembers things differently. On the afternoon when they went from texting to something more, what really happened? Here again is David Muir. Prosser, Washington has a lot in common with so many other small towns across America. The social life is dictated by the high school. The, the joke for years has been, especially when the football team for the high school is playing in a big game, is less one out of town, turn off the lights, you know, things like that. You talk to 80-year-old women on the street, they know the name of the high school football coach and all the players. One of the best-known crosser players, Bubba Frank. Even when we ask, are you any good? Yeah. <laughs> but Bubba is now known around town for something beyond the gridiron. He was a key player in something else, a smoldering small town scandal. It all begins when he was about to lose that first time love, that popular girlfriend, Carly Lusk, her mother, that former mayor. My whole world revolved around him. I didn't like that. So, you know, I said, you know, I, I don't want this anymore. And he still stuck around. But even though their early taste of love is over, Bubba and Carly remain friends. And he would often still come over to the Lusk home. They'd have pool parties all the time, and me and my friends were invited and went over there. It was an escape from what was happening at Bubba's own house. His parents separated, the family coming apart. It was a tough time. It was definitely a tough time. You know, you don't want to put your children through a divorce and things of that sort, but, you know, and I'm sure that me and my husband were preoccupied with our own dealings, but we tried to make it as normal and as possible as it could be for our kids. Bubba's mother, Heidi, told us she knew he was not handling the breakup well. He was a little angry at me at first because I was the one that chose to walk away and finally end it. While at the Lusk home, they say they knew Bubba needed a refuge. He complained a lot about the parents were um, going through a divorce. He just appeared to need some nurturing. Uh, I think she just tried to comfort me for the most part. Linda Lusk would take Bubba and his friends out to eat, take them to practice. Sometimes she'd come and watch. And then there was the texting with Bubba. You know, how you doing? There was a lot of just chit chat. But then they each say the other escalates the texting, becoming flirtatious, even suggestive. She just like kind of gets 
more into the text. Like, they're starting to get dirtier and dirtier. And when we ask Bubba, is he playing along too? Yeah. I think one time he said he wanted to see me without my clothes on, and I'm like, oh, come on. I said, you'd have nightmares. I mean, I would laugh it off. And then he said, oh, well, I bet you do things to yourself when you're by yourself. Even those texts, she says, don't prepare her for the one she receives while at her store. I was at work during the day, and he said, if I came down to your shop, would you give me oral sex? I'm embarrassed to say this, but I texted back WTF, and he's like, oh, well, I'm just joking. But Linda doesn't stop him, and those text messages continue. I think I didn't want to hurt him, which seems a little ridiculous. At the time, she says it seemed harmless and admits to being flattered by a teenager. There were times when he would say that, oh, you look great and you look hot, and I would just laugh and go, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I don't think so. And I'm, I'm sure that there was something in there that, that was kind of nice to hear, but it wasn't amorous. Bubba says the texting with Linda was becoming increasingly risque, admitting to us there was an attraction, but enough to fool around? Yeah. And Bubba is beginning to think of Linda very differently. That attraction now mixed with the hormones of a 14-year-old boy. Just more and more sexual contact, basically with the messaging. It was weird for me just because of how much older she was. On an April afternoon, he would visit Linda Lusk at home at lunchtime, hoping his former girlfriend's mother, the former mayor, and the principal's wife just might become his first conquest. Admitting to us, he told his friends before he went. And what did they say? Good luck with it. He remembers arriving at the house. I go over, and then she opens up the door. We eventually make our way back to uh, Carly's bedroom. What was about to happen at the Lusk home would change lives forever. Well, I let him in through the front door, and he came in, and we sat down here on the sofa. Well, there was some construction going on in the other room, and, and he kept kind of leaning forward and looking, and he just seemed very, very nervous. I had the sense that he wanted to talk to me in private. And so I just took him in this direction. My bedroom's to the right, and I wasn't going to take him in my room. So we just sort of naturally went into my daughter's room. She just told me to take off my backpack, and then she walks with me into uh, Carla's bedroom. He sat down on the bed, and I just said, are you okay? And then he was kind of, you know, almost like shaking nervous. She said if I was sure if I wanted to go along with it, and I said, yeah. And as Linda described what she says happened next, you could see the discomfort on her husband's face. I put my hands on his shoulders. I said, what's going on? And then um, I, I gave him a hug, thinking he just needed a hug. And then um, he took his pants down. Honestly, I, I was shocked. I just froze. And then I he took my, his hands and and I, it was basically, I just briefly may, I mean, I don't even know, I didn't look down um, that I even touched him, but I probably did. And I, I said, I, I'll be right back. And I left the room and I went out in the living room. And I felt like I was gonna throw up. And I think I just took a deep breath and came back in and I just said, you know, you, you need to get back to school. That underage teen maintained something entirely different happened once that bedroom door closed. We just have the oral sex and that's basically all. And he says she made a promise about the next time. Uh, she just said next time I'd have a chance to please her. Back at school, Bubba admits to bragging to his friends. And runaway rumors soon spreading through the school, quickly reaching his ex-girlfriend, Carly, Linda Lusk's daughter. It was just horrible. Just the worst thing I can imagine. And she would also hear some startling admissions of her own mother. She wasn't, you know, denying everything. I mean, she told me, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. When we come back, whose story from that bedroom would that community believe? The football player or the former mayor? And what do you say to the people who say that you were an adult, you were a mother, and that you should have known? When we return. Linda Lusk and Bubba Frank both admit to being alone in a bedroom in Linda's house. But what happened next? That's where their stories differ. According to Bubba, they had sexual contact. Now Linda faces possible criminal charges. But first, 
she has to face her neighbors. Here again, David Muir. Whatever happened in the Lusk house that April afternoon, it unleashed lurid rumors ricocheting through Prosser, Washington. Linda Lusk denies she gave oral sex to her daughter's 14-year-old ex-boyfriend. But she says there were some agonizing confessions she needed to make to her own daughter. She's like, okay, you know, what you're hearing isn't entirely true, but I did have some inappropriate texting and contact with this kid. I was really angry, but not necessarily with my mom, more at... Um, big boy. It's devastating and it was embarrassing and I was um, mortified at the pain that I caused my family. Especially her husband, the principal at the town high school, Kevin Lusk. Late night conversation. She said I need to talk to you. It was uh, incredible. I was pretty upset to say the least. Zillions of questions about what the hell are you thinking? And Kevin would soon learn there were more than just those text messages. There was a photo sent. She told Kevin that after the teenager repeatedly asked for a photo of her naked, Linda sent him a picture in her bra. It's like a kid asking for a candy 500 times. You finally just go here and have a piece, you know? Do I regret it? Was it dumb? Yes. I can't believe I did it. Kevin Lusk demands of his wife two things. You better make contact with the police and you better contact his parents because those are the right things to do. The next morning, Linda calls the boy's mother, Heidi Frank. She just said, you know, I'd really like to get together and talk to you. I've grown very fond of your son. And we've been texting each other back and forth for the last few months. And lately, it's got inappropriate on my part. And she said, and if I could go back in time, I would. And she said, it's made me sick to my stomach. And some of his friends have heard about it and I just wanted to speak to you before you found out from somebody else. And I just started thinking that is the craziest phone call I've ever gotten. And as if that jaw-dropping phone call wasn't enough, then came a knock at the door from the Prosser Police Department. And I said, please tell me this doesn't have anything to do with Linda Lusk. And he just shook his head yes. Investigators were now involved and every night it was the lead story, a small town stunned. Another shocking twist in the case of former Prosser Mayor Linda Lusk. The media has just twisted and bashed it and just makes her seem like such a horrible person. Now some recent text messages and an alleged miscommunication may change the future of this case. And there was a certain frenzy to it. There's no doubt about it. But Kevin Lusk would stand by his wife and we ask him why. I love my wife. I believe her. I support her. And I'm here probably because somebody actually asked the question, how the hell could this happen? Linda Lusk's husband and children say they know the reason for Linda's reckless behavior. They say it stems from her loss at home. Another boy in her life, the one she cared for for years, her son Taylor. I would have done anything for him. Taylor, born with that disorder, severely disabling his body and his heart, wasn't expected to live more than a week. Remarkably, Taylor made it to his teenage years the center of his mother's life. She was everything for Taylor. I mean, she was with him 24 hours a day. Linda had to feed him, change him, move him. At times, she would even breathe for him. It became something I had to do very frequently, was rescue breathing. But fate would eventually win on a spring afternoon when Linda left Taylor at home with her other children, as she often did to work for a time at her shop. But when she got back, Taylor's breathing had stopped one more time, and this time would be the last. I just found him in his bed, not breathing. I blamed myself a little bit that I wasn't there, and could I have stopped it? For me, it was hard to lose my brother, but I, I definitely knew it was, I mean, a million times harder for her. Linda's family says she changed, falling into a deep depression and guilt over Taylor's death. And while she tried to divert her pain by caring for others, in those weeks and months after Taylor's death, she did nothing for herself. She did not seek professional help. You no. have to do something. I'm talking about the grief part. You need to get it handled. You need to go talk to somebody. We didn't. My son died. Of course I was sad, but I didn't realize how bad it was. My whole way of life was gone. I would get up in the morning and go into his room just 
automatically and just go, oh, it's not there. No, so it took a long time to break the routine of just things that I did every day. And it was just, my whole world was turned upside down. Um, that's who I was, I was his mom, I took care of him. That's what I did, and it was gone. And I had my other kids too, but you know, they're pretty self-sufficient. And um, So it was a huge adjustment. Linda and her husband Kevin are convinced that into that empty space came that teenager, Bubba Frank. I felt like I needed to just be what this kid needed, help him in whatever way I could. And at the time, I don't think it was a conscious decision, but um, yeah, absolutely. I think it felt, it felt a, a need or a void. If she hadn't, you know, suffered the loss from Taylor, I'm positive this wouldn't have happened. She wouldn't have, you know, she wouldn't have made those choices. And it's, it's frustrating that people don't know um, her mindset and where she was you know, at the time, and that they just know, you know, what happened, or, but they don't know, you know, they know physically what happened, but they don't know how she was emotionally. And if that is Linda's explanation, some believe Bubba Frank has his own reasons too. Some pointing to peer pressure, other teens who knew of the text messages and pushed him to push the boundaries even further. Bubba told us he didn't have to push, insisting it was Linda who pursued him. The texting just keeps going and she, uh, Eventually asked me if I want to take it out of town or can go to my hotel or we can go to her house or the basement of her shop. At school, some wondered if all of that peer pressure led Bubba to embellish what really happened in that bedroom. I didn't like that he was any way, you know, involved with my mom. She's not completely innocent, but she was taken advantage of when she was very vulnerable and upset and sad. But in the eyes of prosecutor Andy Miller, who soon caught wind of Bubba's bragging, it did not matter. Linda Lusk, he said, was no victim. We charged her with the crime of child molestation in third degree. There was never any doubt in our mind that Ms. Lusk would be convicted. And for her daughter, Carly, the only thing worse than the public scandal consuming her family was the thought of her mother going to jail for a very long time. I, I love her to death, and I don't, I don't want my mom to go away. So it, I just, it was scary to think that that was even a possibility. The question in that small town, who was telling the truth? When we come back, Linda Lusk takes a polygraph test. What would it reveal? And would this mom, this former mayor, be sent away? Stay with us. Linda Lusk is under fire, charged with child molestation. Whatever really happened in that room with 14-year-old Bubba Frank, she faces a possible five years in prison. But was this former mayor really a sex offender? Would the case go to trial? And would Linda serve jail time? Here again, David Muir. No longer just a story told in the hallways of that high school, Linda Lusk, now at the center of a criminal case, charged with child molestation, and the whole town is watching. It had become one of those cases that you never knew what was going to happen. Attacks on the former mayor and her family were merciless. The phone calls, the hate mail, even the videos going viral on the internet. Hey, Mrs. Lusk, how you doing? No longer just Mrs. Lusk. Those videos made by students at the high school where Mr. Lusk was the principal. Hey, Mrs. Lusk, I see you over there. And where the Lusk children were going to school. On this little boy's hair. Their mother was now legendary. I saw, you know, people making you know, vulgar, you know, songs and, you know, music videos even to it. And I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, that really upset me. And then there's like people making posts and just, it's like, they just treat it like it's just, you know, like some gossip to see that kind of stuff and from people you think are your, your friends. It's hurtful. I said, y'all should know, we should take the my mom, I, you don't ever want to hear like somebody you love be treated like they're a monster. I couldn't get out of bed. 
I mean, there were days I just would lay there and just want to die. And while Lusk couldn't get out of bed, she also couldn't hide from the pending legal battle, one that would try to determine how much of that lurid sex story was actually true, how much really happened versus how much was teenage fantasy. Prosecutors determined to punish this mother, even though the teenager in the case, Bubba Frank, filed no charges himself. Bubba was not wanting to testify in trial. Um, in fact, he didn't want this to be reported in the first place. But make no mistake, Bubba's mother wanted Linda Lusk to pay. What she did to my child was wrong. She told us she never once doubted her son's story. You know your children, you know. And immediately I knew. Immediately. There was no doubt in my mind at all, not one time. But Linda Lusk would put her version of the story to the test. She took a polygraph, adamant the oral sex never happened, and she passed. Defense attorney Larry Stevenson says that's where the case should have ended. The polygraph that she took, the disclosure that she's had, her history, everything about her indicates that she is not a sex offender. And damn it, uh, the hell anyway, uh, there should have been some way to avoid it. But the case would go on. In court, prosecutor Andy Miller would ask Linda Lusk about something she told the police, that she had touched Bubba Frank that afternoon. Did you tell Jack Lee Cantu that you touched the 14-year-old boy's penis with your hand? But I may have. And that's true? Yes. Oral sex or not, authorities now arguing touching him was more than enough. In the state of Washington, that's the crime of child molestation in the third degree. I was watching her testimony and saying to myself, it kind of breaks your heart all the way around. To watch somebody describing something that they did that would essentially make them a pariah in a lot of people's eyes, you feel for her, you feel for her family, and you certainly feel for the Franks. After that moment in court, the pressure on Linda Lusk and the family by her side mounting. Facing the possibility of years in prison, Linda agrees to a plea deal, acknowledging the prosecution has evidence that could convict her without having to say she's guilty. But in doing so, she knows she'll face jail time. It was really difficult. Uh, and I waffled back and forth. I mean, I know I'm not a child molester. I know what, there were some things I did that were wrong, but there was never an intention to be involved with this young kid. And I don't, I don't believe I belonged in jail, but I agreed, I agreed to it. Linda was sentenced to 90 nights at the county jail. And you were strip searched every night. I mean, how, that's so humiliating. The former mayor suddenly sleeping here instead. This is where we sleep. On a top bunk surrounded by three cellmates. I've always been an advocate for children, so it's heart heartbreaking for me because I know who I am. I'm, I know I'm not a threat to anybody. And Can you understand difficult. those who, who might say, though, given what happened, how can you call yourself an advocate for children? I think, you know, any one of us could judge anybody. But were you an advocate for that teenager? This was a kid I took under my wing and, and really wanted to nurture and help. And, you know, it was one moment in time that happened. I mean, I've owned it. I've, I've taken responsibility. And <laughs> I, I wish we all had a rewind button. And, but I would never get myself in that position ever again. And as painful and unfair as Linda found her jail time, others in the small town felt she got off easy. I just felt like it was not punishment enough. And in a telling moment, the teenager himself told us he didn't think Linda Lusk deserved any jail time, insisting that he had not been taken advantage of. I basically knew what I was doing, so I could have avoided the situation. But yet again, Miss Lusk was the older adult. Oh, wow. But after all of those nights behind bars, we were there. That morning before the sun came up, as Linda Lusk got out of jail, her pillows in hand, her time behind bars, over. Do you remember the moment that you felt free again? You know, I don't feel like I'm ever going to be free of this. <laughs> that early morning, heading straight to the grocery store, and home in time to make breakfast to surprise the husband, the high school principal, who'd been waiting. 
making your breakfast. Hey, how are you? <laughs> and to surprise the children who stood by their mom. But as we were with them in that kitchen for their first moments back together as a family, the reality hanging over them all. Would this last after all they'd been through? Could their marriage survive? <laughs> when we come back, Linda Lusk is suddenly defending herself again. Only this time, it isn't her husband holding her hand. It's someone else. You were watching 2020. And how old was he? Another much younger man about to enter Linda Lusk's life. Stay with us. Linda Lusk has put her court case behind her, but now she must cope with all the repercussions of the lurid sex scandal. And as she makes another choice in her personal life, how will her family react this time? Here with the surprising conclusion of our story, David Muir. After two months sleeping on that upper bunk in the county jail, Linda's happy homecoming soon crashed into reality. Days later, the former mayor had to register as a sex offender, a requirement of her plea deal. Anytime there's a change of address, you have to report that. Also, as part of that plea deal, Linda could no longer be in her own home when there were children around who were not her own. So when your kids had friends over... Mm -hmm. I would leave. Because you had to? Mm -hmm. Yes. This meant sometimes sleeping in the basement of your store? Yes. And when you were doing that, did you think, how did I get myself into this position? One bad decision has led to this just collapse of my life changed drastically. Unable to attend her own children's events without a court-approved supervisor with her, this was Linda's new normal, watching Carly swim beats from her car. Thank you, Mark. Go get him, Carly! It's not fair. It's a lot of restricting and like unnecessary things and when she traveled with her husband to an out-of-town swim meet what they didn't realize was that linda was crossing county lines a violation of her parole even though she was there with her loyal husband there to see their daughter someone ordered her to police they came into my work and put me in handcuffs and took me to jail because i went to my daughter's swim meet and what was that like horrible <laughs> It was absolutely horrible. What do you say to the parents out there who say she should go near kids after what happened? I think everybody's got their skeletons, and most people just are lucky enough to not have theirs be public. But Linda's skeletons were now exacting a price on her husband, the high school principal. Because he drove her to that swim meet, he was being punished too. And they told him he had to leave the job. They put him on um, administrative leave and did a an, an full-on investigation. Because you went to the swimming. Because meet. I went to the swimming. So he was paying a price too? Yes. Uh, he was devastated. And yet again, Linda would be sent back to jail for crossing that county line. Another 12 days behind bars, and she was assigned community service. What did you do? I cleaned a church. <laughs> were you praying while you were in that church? Ah, I do a lot of praying in and out of church. I did a lot of thinking. After the praying, all of the thinking, a year would go by before all of those restrictions were lifted after being labeled a sex offender. But just when Linda thought she was in the clear and could go back to her children's games, the Prosser School District informed her that they changed the rules. Now just one of only two school districts in the entire state of Washington, barring any convicted sex offender, regardless of the offense, from stepping foot on school property without written permission. Linda says that change was because of her. All of this taking a toll on this parent, while at home the ordeal taking a toll on her marriage too. You and your husband were struggling. Yeah, it's been a long couple of years. What do you think was the turning point for the end? Uh, I, I think when he got put on leave, it was so difficult for him. And I could see that, you know, people in this community are never going to leave you alone. Linda had decided the time had come to move out. A lot of people were stunned by how supportive he was of you during the whole thing. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, I, I think he believed in me. When the marriage fell apart, what did he say? I think he told me it was that decision would be the saddest day of his life. So he still loved you? I believe he did. But the marriage was over. Linda Lusk has a new man by her side, a much younger one. You were watching 2020. Mm -hmm. Adam Canary was watching our first report on the Linda Lust case. She was a town mayor. He says he felt sorry for the entire family, reaching out at first to her husband with an email asking if he could talk to Linda. She remembers their first call. I think the first time we talked, we talked for like an hour. So there was a lot. He just had a lot of really good questions about what I'd been through and, you know, shared some of his experiences and I just felt like there was a lot of empathy and understanding. And how old was he? 28 at the time. And how old were you? Oh, 50? Oh, well, 51, I guess. Yeah. Was there any part of you that thought, oh no, this is another young man much younger than me? Um, you know, his age didn't make a difference to me. Already friends, Linda says after her marriage dissolved, it soon turned into something more. What would you say to those people who, who watched your husband uh, be so supportive of you? You were with him 17 years. Mm -hmm. And within a few months, you were already with someone new. You know, people can judge it and say what they want, but as long as we're happy, really, shouldn't that be what matters in the end? What was it about what you saw that made you think, I want to reach out to this woman? It was that, that look in her eye. I mean, my heart broke for everything she had to go through. I felt that our feelings, our emotions, our passions just linked up. We just had an immediate connection where I felt like, you know what, I think this person's going to be my friend. He was very supportive, had a lot of empathy for what I'd been through, especially with my son. Empathy, because Adam too had lost a child. A connection they say so powerful that Adam left his wife and three-year-old daughter behind in New Jersey, moving to Washington State to be with Linda. Too. Do you struggle with that as a dad, having left your little girl to move to live with Linda? I, um, I don't struggle with a decision. I struggle with a distance. One way or another, I wasn't going to be there 24-7 after we were separated prior to this. And do, do people who might say you chose Linda over being near your little girl? I'm, I'm always there for my daughter and she probably won't understand until she's much older anyway. To me, he's, he was my best friend and he's Adam, he wasn't an age. And I think there's such a double standard in this society. If I was dating somebody 20 years older, nobody would care. And men date younger women all the time and nobody cares. But a lot of people looking at this would say it's not just that, it's that you had that incident with a teenage boy who was much younger. He manipulated his way into my home. I, I wish I would have handled it different but I did not seek out some young boy. You don't think she was at all responsible? No. He was a teenager. To this day, I think people make their decisions. I think there are moments where you want to go back, but the level of remorse and apology she had at her door didn't justify what actually happened. But a lot of people say she was the adult, he was the teenager, she was the mother. Um, but I know her heart. I know what her intentions were. I know what her intentions are now. And all I can do is support her. Linda Lusk has found love again, but finding peace in a small town that shunned her has been much harder. She moved 30 minutes away to Richland, Washington. It's really tough for me to return to this community. I just instantly feel this sort of cloudy, like, weight on my shoulders. People just love to talk. Small towns. Small town. You know, I've got my haters. What do you say, though, to the members of the community who say, you brought this on yourself? I, I would say that we've all made mistakes and I've paid for them. And I'm, I'm not a threat. But there are many in this town who still believe she is. And that teenager Bubba, who never pressed charges against Linda Lusk, he says he's not bothered by her new title as sex offender. What she did was wrong. Everyone deserves to know that she is a sex offender. Perhaps surprisingly, Carly, Linda's daughter, is friends with Bubba again. I got five bucks he does. I have six. She says she just wants her family to heal. And part of that healing also means accepting her mother's new boyfriend, Adam, 
into the family. Cheers. Compliments to Chef. My kids have a great relationship with Adam. They love him. He's a lot of fun. They, they have a good relationship with him. As I sit here with the two of you, you both seem very happy, and you're both looking forward to your own future. What about the teenage boy? I feel very bad for what happened, but I don't think he's ever accepted responsibility for what he did. But do you hope he'll have a future like the two of you are going to have? I, yeah, I, I hope that he has a, a good future, but I, I really don't dwell on it. It doesn't sound terribly convincing. You know, I just need to move on to a better place and, and be happy. She wants to move on, but with one final hurdle. Every time I ask to attend something is just denied. Seeing her own daughter graduate at the end of senior year. So I'm gravely concerned that they're going to deny my access to graduation. And I've already missed so much of my daughter's high school years. You know, I have a right to be involved in my kids' life and they're especially the big events. And when we asked the high school whether Linda Lusk will be allowed to attend her daughter's graduation, they told us they'll cross that bridge when they come to it. So you're determined to keep fighting the school? Yeah, absolutely. And you plan on being at your daughter's graduation? Yes, one way or another. There is no way that they're going to keep me. I mean, even if I get arrested, I am going to my daughter's graduation. And to those parents who say you should have thought about that? Well, I'd probably tell them just to mind their own business. Because, <laughs> you know, I have a right to be involved in my kids' life. And you plan and, on being there? Yeah, absolutely. And if people don't like it, you know, they can sit away from me or, I don't, you know, really not there for them. I'm there for my daughter. And I always will be there to support her. As of 2013, Linda Lusk remains a registered sex offender. I'm John Quinones. Please join us next time for another edition of 2020 on ID.